Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this uh, 28th of May 2022 edition of Alaska Weather Saturday. I'm David Percy. Up uh, first on the uh, river breakup map, still uh, not much change. The uh, Colville River showing some areas of uh, some open there on, around the mid stretch area. No change on the Kaparik or the uh, Sag River. And then the uh, Let's see, Noatak River has uh, some open along much of the uh, stretch, or actually mostly open now along much of the uh, river, and the uh, Kobuk has open on the upper streams and mostly open downstream. So really, uh, with the exception of the North Slope, all the rivers along and south of the Brooks Range have run their breakup course for this year. And for the uh, fire danger, and we've got uh, high to very high fire danger across a pretty widespread area, central interior, right on down into the southwest, as well as the Copper River Basin, Susitna, Manuska Valley, around Cook Inlet into the western Kenai Peninsula. This is for grass and, of course, uh, dead grass, brown grass, not the green up grass that we've got going on now. But uh, for the uh, dead grass, very high fire danger in quite an extensive area there. And from that, we'll move on to uh, hazardous weather graphic. Really no uh, watches, warnings, or advisories out weather-wise. Uh, just that persistent flood advisory for Northern Copper River Basin, uh, Gulcana River area, and the uh, Lake Louise. And that's out uh, for the next several days, at least into Thursday at this point in time. Probably stay out until the snow melts. And for the uh, satellite imagery, See a lot of clear skies there over the western central interior, south of the Brooks Range, right into the Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula there. Even some partly and mostly sunny skies on long and south of the eastern Aleutians. Northern uh, three quarters of the Panhandle seems a fair amount of clearing. Low clouds along the coast, but there is some shower activity, mostly cloudy skies with showers over the southern Panhandle, light rain occurring uh, in the afternoon, into the afternoon, through the morning, very, um, light rain, light winds, precipitation amounts in the last 12 hours anywhere from 5 to 15 hundredths of an inch, places like Metlakatla, Ketchikan, Kloak, Craig, those areas in the south there, dry in the north. Uh, an area low clouds there right along the eastern North Gulf Coast into uh, around Middleton Island, but a lot of clear skies there south of the uh, Kenai Peninsula via Cavu flight from uh, Anchorage to Kodiak, if, or actually probably from uh, Fairbanks to Kodiak earlier, although some development, lower or cumulus clouds, convection starting to build up as you can see over the interior there. Uh, well, into infrared now, but uh, clouds moving from west to east over the top of the high pressure area along the Arctic coast into the north slope. That brought some moisture, especially to the east side, in the form of rain and snow, Kaktovik, Barter Island, uh, Camden Bay, seeing anywhere from five to fifteen hundredths of an inch and lighter amounts back to the west. Just some about a hundredth of an inch at Teller falling. Uh, That's probably from thick dew. A lot of fog and low clouds through the Bering Strait into the Bering Sea today. A very weak system out over the western Bering Sea, the low center actually north of the Komodorsky Islands, but front with that uh, bringing some rain, fog, low clouds, drizzle, uh, not much in the way of wind, not a wind producer at all from Shimianat 2 eastward to Amchitka Island. And uh, you can see that uh, slowly moving eastward, that frontal boundary also kind of breaking up as it does. It's not going to make too much more eastward progress. It probably won't even reach ADAC. And it'll stay, the whole system will stay out to the west and gradually weaken as high pressure holds over the central and eastern Bering Sea. And high pressure aloft will continue to hold over interior Alaska, keeping it warm and dry for the next couple of days. Be some afternoon convection building up once again over the uh, western Alaska range into the eastern Alaska range, eastern interior areas. And uh, shower chances again with that cloudiness down over the southern panhandle. 
On the chart today, a lot of uh, warm temperatures around, temperatures rising into the uh, upper 60s to uh, mid to upper 70s by early mid-afternoon from the Kenai Peninsula right on up into the Tanana Valley and uh, western Cuscombe Valley as well, down into Bristol Bay, well into the 70s, King Salmon, Copper River Basin areas rising in the 70s as well. Then a couple of weak troughs uh, moving in westerly flow over the top of the upper level ridge over to the south, over the western part of the state, bringing up that area of moisture to the uh, Arctic coast and north slope. And you can see the high pressure area, the light winds are only in quite an extensive area of IFR, low clouds and fog from the Bering Strait and the Chukchi Sea, covering much of the Bering Sea. Then you get into some uh, light rainfall with that system out to the west. And again, that front, that whole system isn't going to move too much. It's, just, it's too weak to push through the high pressure area there. It definitely has, does not have the upper level wind support to break through the ridge. So if, again, tonight, not much change from today. Interior Alaska, not much change uh, from today either. Uh, just uh, isolated showers, risk of a thunderstorm, western Alaska range. And uh, up over that low there over the uh, upper Yukon Valley areas. Still a risk of some shower activity over the southern southeast coast and some light moisture for the eastern Arctic coast. Again, series of troughs moving from west to east in that area. And that will continue through tomorrow more or less. And again, look for uh, thunderstorm activity from uh, around Eagle and actually even uh, along the Porcupine River there to the southern slopes of the Berks Range. Could see some lightning strikes there. Any one of those showers might develop into a thunderstorm. <clears throat> More likely though along the central western Alaska Range all the way down to the Aleutian Range. Uh, be a chance of thunderstorms, chance of showers over the Alaska Peninsula. No change over the Bering Sea uh, with that low center staying out to the west. Still a chance of showers over the central and southern southeast coast tomorrow with mostly cloudy skies keeping it cooler there than it will be up uh, Juneau, Gustavus, and Haines area to Skagway. Stays mostly sunny there and warmer with uh, than the southern areas. Not that it'll be much warmer than today, but the North Gulf Coast mostly sunny. Areas of low clouds uh, right off the central North Gulf Coast there, but probably they'll stay offshore. Might move on, it might push into Cordova tonight, but it'll burn back off the coast, but not for Middleton Island. Kodiak, another mostly sunny day, as well as interior Alaska. Again, highs 70 to 80. Not much change in Monday as well, although we can see a bigger storm starting to move onto the chart there, but that's well south of Kodiak Island. That's going to act to build a ridge up along the North Gulf Coast with lower pressure over the interior. Start seeing those gusty east winds through Turnagon Arm and into West Anchorage in the afternoon. Could get pretty gusty, otherwise thunderstorms over the southwest interior. Other than that, uh, not much change. And for the lows tonight, 20s for the Arctic coast and North Slope, uh, upper 30s to mid 40s across much of interior Alaska. Some areas, isolated areas staying in the lower 50s, Palmer for example. And for highs tomorrow, Back into the 60s, 70s, maybe some areas pushing upper 70s, 79, 80 in some areas. Mid 70s, northern Panhandle, mid 60s to the south, followed by lows. Again, 20s, north slope in the Arctic coast, 40s to lower 50s for the remainder of in, uh, Alaska, except the Bering Sea into the 30s, around 40 for the Aleutians. Highs, 70 to 80 over interior Alaska, cooler along the coast, and mid 60s and mid 70s for the Panhandle. Around 50 for the Alaska Peninsula, lower to mid-30s for the Arctic coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Stays VFR uh, through tonight and into tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, across southern Alaska, central interior as well. But out over the Bering Sea, widespread IFR from the central Aleutians right on up to the Bering Strait. And then some more IFR, their central and eastern north slope in the eastern Arctic coast with marginal VFR in between those two zones. Otherwise, VFR down into the Gulf of Alaska, northern Panhandle, southern southeast coast, so pretty marginal. And for the uh, afternoon, marginal VFR along the central and south coast of the Panhandle, otherwise good VFR in the inside waters, Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound, Kodiak Island again, northward across uh, interior Alaska right up to the Brooks Range. North of the mountains there you got some IFR that extends out to the eastern Arctic coast. IFR from the northwest coast through the Bering Strait to St. Lawrence Island. Then a break to marginal VFR conditions St. Matthew Island to the Pribloffs over to Nunavak Island, Yukon Delta Coast. On into Togiak and Bristol Bays north side of the Alaska Peninsula and Pribloffs 
all marginal and IFR south of there from uh, all the Aleutian chain IFR southwest Bering Sea. And for Monday morning, Bering Sea, just about all IFR as well as the Aleutians and uh, down to the north coast of the, sewer, of the Alaska Peninsula, otherwise IFR to the Bering Strait coast and uh, marginal VFR Shishmaref up to the northwest coast, Kivalina, Point Hope, all of the Arctic coast. And then over toward uh, no Alpine Air Strip, strip eastward there, Kaktovik Barter Island particularly, IFR, narrow band back into the Brooks Range there on the north slopes. And uh, south of the mountains though, good VFR again, all the way down the Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak Island, uh, Panhandle, VFR, marginal VFR, central south coast. And for the afternoon, VFR, interior Alaska, and for the Brooks Range northward, marginal VFR. Again, IFR kind of hanging tough over the eastern Arctic coast. And then IFR really entrenched over the Bering Sea from the Strait all the way down, St. Lawrence Island all the way down to the uh, north shore of the uh, Fox Islands there. And uh, south of the chain to the west with marginal VFR, western Alaska Peninsula, but good VFR, Bristol Bay, uh, North Gulf Coast, Kodiak, and uh, Copper River Basin. And Atuvik, marginal VFR for the day Sunday. At times, Adigan marginal at times. Could be some IFR early in the day on the northern approaches of both passes. Lake Clark and Merrill, though, VFR. Rainy, another VFR day coming up. Maybe two, maybe three more. Rain or windy, same thing, VFR for the next uh, couple of days. Several days more of, I, of VFR for Isabel. And Mentasta, staying VFR through Sunday. Tanita, same forecast, VFR on either entrance. Portage, good VFR even on the east side. And for Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels, gradient there, uh, westerly flow. Westerly jet coming up over the top of the upper level ridge to the south. So two to 6,000 feet there across northern Alaska in the Brooks Range. Chillier air out over the central western Bering Sea. A couple of 2,000 foot pockets there. And uh, icing wise, uh, best chance of uh, isolated moderate rime icing will be out west there with that weak system between five and 11,000 feet from uh, Chimney and Attu eastward to Amchitka Island. Icing free everywhere else, uh, risk of some mixed icing possibly over the southern southeast coast, nothing too significant there. And with those uh, weak disturbances skirting the Arctic coast and North Slope, could be some occasional light uh, icing poss possibly, just a risk, two to 6,000 feet there. Jet stream, uh, west-northwest flow, 55 to 70 knots, carrying a series of those weak disturbances eastward there, mostly along the Arctic coast. Otherwise, upper level high pressure with southwest interior and the Yukon, uh, 50 knot northwesterlies coming into the central interior, and then east-southeast, 40 to 50 knots, northern Bering Sea. Stronger winds, 85 knots just south of the western Aleutians. Otherwise, the main jet is well south of the forecast area. 9,000 feet, uh, best flow from the west and northwest, 25 to 40 knots there, north of the Brooks Range out to the Arctic Ocean. High pressure entrenched over the uh, southern part of the state and the panhandle, weak low there uh, near the Queen Charlotte's not really doing much. Uh, a little bit of an increase in the winds, but not too significant. 3,000 feet, northeast 35 knots, just west of Nunavak Island, otherwise pretty light. And as far as turbulence goes, there's no significant turbulence forecast due to the light wind pattern, no shear or anything, low level one shear. And so after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Leatherbacks are the largest turtles on Earth, growing up to seven feet long and weighing more than 2,000 pounds. These sea turtles are among the most highly migratory animals on Earth, some traveling up to 10,000 miles a year between their nesting and feeding grounds. Prevalent in every ocean except the Arctic and Antarctic, the species overall is declining, more so in the Pacific. In the Eastern Pacific, the Mexican population was once thought to be the largest in the world and has experienced an alarming decline. This trajectory of decline that we've seen and actually collapse. We're talking about only 20 or 30 turtles nesting every year where thousands used to just 40 years ago. That's the kind of dramatic decline 
The Western Pacific population has been declining steadily and it's particularly critical to act now before it collapses while there are enough turtles in nests to respond to conservation measures. But threats to all leatherbacks in the Pacific need to be addressed. The top threats to populations are uncontrolled coastal development, all the bad stuff on the nesting beaches, egg harvest, poaching of the females, predation on the eggs by dogs and pigs, deforestation makes the sand too warm and dry for the, and the eggs don't hatch. Another one is incidental capture in fishing gear. During their vast migrations, they get caught in fishing gear throughout the Pacific. And finally, marine debris, which the leatherbacks mistake for their favorite food, jellyfish, and they choke on those. Protecting leatherbacks in U.S. waters alone is not enough to ensure the continued existence of the species. The highly migratory nature of Pacific leatherbacks requires cooperation and international collaboration. NOAA is focusing on partnerships with Mexico, Central America, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands in the Pacific. Our action plan promotes a holistic recovery strategy that addresses all the sources of mortality. So that's basically ensuring that the remaining nesting sites are protected and the nests produce as many hatchlings as possible. And then secondly, in tandem with that is reducing the fisheries related mortalities. We're working with international partners to incentivize co community participation on the nesting beach conservation and developing alternative livelihood programs that wean communities off leatherback resources and introduce alternative methods for food and income. Recovery is going to take a long time, on the order of 20 to 30 years at least before we see some of these actions bear fruit. But here in the U.S., we can all help leatherbacks by making seafood choices, for instance, that support sustainable fishing practices. And beachgoers can certainly do their part by keeping our oceans clean of plastic debris, picking up marine litter, particularly plastic bags. Together with our partners, we are strengthening protection and conservation efforts to ensure a future for leatherbacks helping them to survive and once again thrive in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. For over 40 years, NOAA scientists have been collecting data and piecing together the story of the gray whale. Each year, new discoveries are made, revealing the secrets of this ancient traveler. With the Northeastern Pacific population recovered, leading scientists from the NOAA Southwest Fisheries Science Center continue their research efforts to help save the Western population from extinction. The most effective way to identify individuals and count the population is to photograph them from the surface. Using the gray whale's distinctive markings and gray spots caused by parasites on their skin, scientists document these characteristics to identify individuals. So we're able to track migratory pathways and corridors by the simple use of photo identification. There are other ways to do that as well, biopsy sampling and genetics. And from the air. Aerial photography is one way you can study animals based on their size and shape. So you can learn a lot about nutritive and reproductive condition of whales just by measuring their size and shape from vertical aerial photographs. You can also put satellite transmitters on them and track them remotely. You put the transmitter on and let them go and you watch them move across the Pacific or down to China or wherever it might be. To further learn and discover where these great sojourners swim, the team of researchers traveled to Russia and set up camp on Sakhalin Island. 
The main focus of our research uh, while we were on Sockland was to collect photo identification. If it was a whale that we had not collected a genetic sample from previously, we would also attempt to collect a sample from the whales. Whereas whales are endowed with natural insulation, their human observers must gear up to brave the cold in order to study these marine giants up close. We're typically only able to work about one third of the time that we're there, and that's mostly due to this fog that just invades the area and sits sometimes for weeks on end. So it can be very challenging to try and do field work in this site. Recently, two whales from the western population surprised scientists by migrating across the Pacific to the waters of California and Mexico. It's a really fun finding. It's added another piece to the puzzle that we didn't previously know about. And I would have to say that it's opened up more questions than we had before. Research scientists from Japan, Russia, and the United States share images of animals they've spotted. We take a photograph of an individual off of Sakhalin Island, and we get a phone call from Japanese scientists, and they say, hey, guess what? We've got a picture of a gray whale in Japan. We say, hey, can you send it to us? We'd love to try and match it. They'll send us the picture, we'll compare it to our catalog, and we'll say, hey, we've got a match from Sakhalin to Japan. Unlike many species of whales that still remain on the endangered species list, the Eastern Pacific gray whale, once on the brink of extinction, now numbers about 20,000 individuals. Recovery efforts that started 40 years ago and the ongoing research and monitoring by NOAA scientists have contributed to the conservation of the gray whales. Together with legal protection and public education, scientists are playing their part to ensure the survival of this magnificent migratory animal. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Coastal water forecasts, uh, northwest winds 10 to 15 knots along the coast of the Panhandle, sea 6 to 7 feet. And north to northwest breeze at 10 knots for the central and southern inside channels and water areas, Lynn Canal, north winds 25 knots, good for small craft advisories there with seas at about 5 feet. And moving on to uh, Monday's outlook, light variable winds over the inside waters at five knots with slight seas. Winds also light along the coast, all northwest at 10 knots, seas running five to six feet. And for Prince William Sound, north, uh, variable winds, 10 knots, seas two feet. North Gulf Coast, variable winds at 10 knots, seas three feet. Barren Islands, variable winds 10 knots, seas three feet. Kamishak Bay, variable winds 10 knots, seas three feet. And Cook Inlet, Variable winds, 10 knots, seas two to three feet. And for Monday, Prince Liam Sound, northeast winds at 10 knots, seas two feet. And for the North Gulf Coast, east winds picking up to 20 to 25 knots with seas around four feet. Small craft advisories for the Barren Islands, east winds 25 knots with five foot seas, Kamishak Bay, easterly winds at 20 knots. And Cook Inlet, south to southeast winds, 10 to 15 knots with three to four foot seas. And for Kodiak Island, variable to southwest winds at 10 to 15 knots. The Alaska Peninsula, variable winds, 10 knots, seas three feet. Bristol Bay, light southwest breeze at 10 knots. And for the day Monday, big increase in the winds here. Uh, Kodiak Island, small craft advisories, northeast winds, 30 knots, seas building to as high as 11 feet. 40 knot winds, good gales there from uh, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, northeast 40 knots, and from Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev. Northeast winds 35 knots, seas there 15 to 17 feet. Bering Sea side of the peninsula, much lighter conditions, north at 15 and Bristol Bay, northeast winds 15 knots with three foot seas. Fox Islands tomorrow, variable winds 10 to 15 knots, seas running three to four feet. Light variable winds for Adak and Atka, three to four foot seas. And uh, Kiska to Shimia, looking at a southwest breeze, 15 knots. And then for Monday, 20 knot southeast winds from Shimia to Amchitka Island with seas four to five feet. Winds stay light and variable for Adak and Atka, 10 knots with three foot seas. 
And for Rinmac Island, variable to north winds at uh, 10 to 15 knots. Unalaska Island, north to northwest winds at 15 to 25 knots, seas building up to 6 feet. Trivaloff Islands on Sunday, north winds 15 knots. St. Matthew Island, northwest at 15. And for St. Lawrence Island, northwest at 10. Along the southwest coast, north to northwest winds at 15 knots and light winds for Norton Sound. On Monday, northeast winds 15 knots for Norton Sound, otherwise Yukon Delta Coast, uh, Kuskokwim Delta Coast, and St. Lawrence Island all out of the north at 15 knots with three foot seas. St. Matthew Island, St. George and St. Paul, northeast at 15. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast tomorrow, west winds 10 knots, central and west side, west winds 15 knots, and from Cape Beaufort to Wales, west winds at 10 knots. And for Monday, from uh, Cape Beaufort to Wales, northeast winds 5 to 10 knots, western Arctic coast, west winds at 10 knots, and for the central coast, west at 15, and the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, west winds 10 to 15 knots. And for tonight, again, a uh, couple of weak troughs bringing some skiffs of snow to the eastern Arctic coast. Uh, very light, though. Uh, areas of low clouds and fog go along with that. And uh, isolated evening thunderstorms up over the eastern interior there, either side of the upper Yukon River. And uh, to much lesser extent over the western Alaska range. Otherwise, fair and mild, light winds over much interior Alaska right on down to the North Gulf Coast. Uh, lingering isolated, the widely scattered shower condition continues over the southern panhandle. And a very weak system out over the western Bering Sea keeps periods of light rain, fog, and drizzle over the western Aleutians. But that same pattern under high pressure will exist also over the Bering Sea, with little clouds and fog up into the Bering Strait. No change out that way for Sunday. Look for a uh, Thunderstorms along the western Alaska range there to the Denali Park from the Aleutian Range all the way up into the uh, eastern interior. Shower chances continue with cloudy, cooler conditions for the panhandle, otherwise another sunny, warm day in interior Alaska, high 65 to 80 degrees. And for Monday, sunshine and warm temperatures continue, highs anywhere from uh, 70 to 80 over the interior and 50s and 60s along the coast. <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.